Okay, welcome to class, everyone. Uh, hope you all had a good, uh, refreshing weekend and ready to face another week. Uh, okay, were you able to go through the notes? Yes, no? Are you able to go through the notes? I can't hear any response. Okay. Okay, sort of, okay. Okay, so... Uh, we began um, a last class. Okay, by looking at uh, the importance of ministering uh, to children. And then uh, we began looking at the biblical basis and the mandate. Mandate means an order or a command for children's ministry. Uh, we also looked at God's uh, plan for children, that God has a plan for children, that his plan includes uh, family, Okay, that they are part of the family life. The importance uh, we saw that God plays in teaching children uh, from scripture. We also saw that the children were an integral part of the covenantal community of the Israelites. They were part of the corporate worship. Uh, they were part of uh, praising and worshiping God, prayer and fasting, uh, repentance, also the public hearing of um, and reading of scripture and also salvation. So we see that, uh, you know, today's children are also part of the covenantal community. And when I mean com covenantal community, I basically mean the church. So children are uh, uh, an integral part of the church of today. And hence, they should be included in various aspects of church life and should also be trained and taught uh, how to meaningfully participate in various aspects of church life. So that is what uh, uh, we saw in class one. Uh, we'll continue today. We'll uh, look at, uh, you know, uh, the min ministering to children was a priority for Jesus. And uh, we'll also look at uh, some more reasons as to why children's ministry is important. Okay, so we'll begin by looking at, uh, you know, that the ministering to children was a priority for uh, Jesus. So uh, was it a priority for Jesus? Yes, no. And if it's a yes, how can you establish the fact that, yes, it was a, it was a priority for Jesus? If it was no, why do you say so? Can anyone share your thoughts? At least a yes or no, uh, was ministering to Jesus uh, a priority or importance to him? Yes, it was. Okay, yes, it was. Okay, Erin is also saying yes, Siddharth is saying yes. Thank you. Why do you say yes? How do we know? We can see the incident when when uh, when the kids came to Jesus and the disciples were stopping them and Jesus said, "Let them come to me, for for the kingdom of heaven is uh, of children." So we can see Jesus he did want to minister to children and it was it was kind of important for him as well. Yes. Thank you, Dave. So we see this in, uh, uh, like Dave rightly said, uh, you know, in Matthew chapter 19, we read that uh, uh, people or parents brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Okay, the disciples did not think that uh, children should be ministered to, but we see that Jesus did. He made time to minister to children, and hence we see that, um, you know, uh, let me just uh, point out to those uh, slides.
okay so we see that children are precious in jesus sight he loves them he wants children to be brought to him and uh, we read this in matthew chapter 19 verse um, 14 so can somebody read matthew chapter 19 verse 14 i've uh, put the uh, scripture verses on the slide so you all can read it out from there please anyone can read matthew chapter 19 verse 14 Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this. Yes, thank you. Uh, and can somebody else read Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse 3? Unless you come, like... Unless... Yes, go ahead, Erin. Unless you come like little children, you never, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. So here we see, uh, you know, um, uh, Jesus saying that, uh, you know, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And he says, unless uh, you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, what did Jesus mean by saying this? What did Jesus mean by saying that unless you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven? So should we become small and act immature uh, uh, like children? I think so talking uh, about that. I think humbling ourselves. Thank you. It's humbling yourself, okay, like little children. It's basically, Jesus is valuing a childlike nature and uh, character. You know, what is a childlike uh, nature and uh, the character of a child is they're basically very vulnerable. That means they, you know, they're, they're so prone to, uh, you know, their weaknesses, to difficulties, and they're so dependent on their, uh, on their parents. And they totally abandon themselves to the trust and the care of their um, uh, parents. And so, you know, Jesus is saying that we need to have this childlike, faith and trust and total dependence, total surrender to our Heavenly Father, totally just uh, abandoning ourselves to Him, trusting Him, depending on Him uh, at all times and being led, uh, you know, uh, by Him. And so here Jesus is upholding a childlike approach to life as an essential quality for all believers. Now, just like parents felt that uh, the children need uh, Jesus, so also children of today need help in learning how to, you know, navigate in today's world. Uh, they need more of Jesus because, you know, they have uh, a, a, a long life ahead of them. They have so much of life ahead of them. And also they're living in very difficult uh, times okay so today's children are faced with war terrorism uh, divorce of their parents you know crime rape uh, the pandemic uh, itself is so uh, difficult for them uh, abuse there's uh, pressure of friends pressure of the world uh, social media that's telling them so much they're so confused with what is right and what is wrong and they have so many other different anxieties and hence children of today you know need the touch of Jesus in their life they need the help of Jesus they need so much of Jesus in them so they need his help to cope and they need his help to deal with the situations they face just as we adults also do we need so much of jesus we need so much of his help his guidance and the same way children also we think sometimes you know uh, children don't need uh, jesus as much as we adults do but they do uh, need jesus so when jesus gave the command uh, to preach and teach the gospel, uh, the Great Commission, and to baptize people. He did not specify uh, just one 
particular age group or uh, he it was not a command just for one uh, people group it was uh, a command that was across all ages and for all people groups and we read this in mark chapter 16 verse 15 and also we read this in um uh, Matthew chapter 28 verses uh, 19 to 20. So some can somebody read Mark chapter 16 verse 15. It's on your screen, please. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Thank you. Can somebody else read Matthew chapter 28 verses uh, 19 to 20? Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to the observe all things that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Yes, thank you. So here we see that, you know, uh, Jesus is giving this command to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, it's not just uh, specifying one people group or it's not specifying just one age group, but it's also, spe it's, it's, you know, mentioning, uh, you know, preach the gospel uh, or teach the gospel to every creature. And this is inclusive of children as well. So we need to preach and teach uh, to children. And the Great Commission uh, here, it says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so here also we don't see any specific age mentioned. Uh, so even children are inclusive of this. So we need to teach them, make them disciples, baptize them, uh, and help them and teach them to observe all the things that God has commanded us uh, to do. Okay, and we also see that uh, the promise of the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, is also for uh, people of all age groups. So can somebody read Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, please? And the Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise for the you and your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Thank you. So here we see that the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you, that is for adults, and also for your children and for everyone who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. That means all of them who receive Jesus Christ and accept him as their Lord and Savior and receive uh, salvation. So hence we see through these scripture passages that it was Jesus' priority that children be ministered to, uh, the gospel be preached to children and adults as well, that children also be baptized and they receive the promise of the um, Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, sometimes we think, you know, uh, uh, should children be baptized? And we think, no, they we wait for uh, the baptism, you know, for them to be baptized because they won't understand. But we have uh, children, you know, uh, I know children in third standard in children's church, uh, you know, they're very eager to be baptized. They tell their parents they want to be baptized. So the parents came and spoke to me and we said, we'll have a class. And the parents also took a step forward and took the child when we had a baptism uh, at church uh, to, you know, to just listen to what pastor is saying, to see how, you know, uh, baptism is done. And also to make sure that their child, uh, you know, has accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And I'm just so glad to say that so many children uh, in our children's church are baptized. Recently, a couple of Sundays back, you know, um, we had a baptism and um, 
I think four or five of uh, of them were uh, children from our children's church. Uh, you know, so children can be baptized. We can share salvation. We can lead them to the Lord. Uh, you know, and also um, uh, you know teach them about the Holy Spirit, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, and also get them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and move and flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Now, since children were such a high priority for Jesus, they should be for us as a church church as well. By this, I mean that, uh, you know, children's ministry in a church should be well planned. It should be well executed. It should have a team of committed and trained teachers. Uh, uh, the children's church also should have a relevant uh, curriculum that is relevant for children in today's uh, time uh, and in today's age where it is, uh, you know, uh, matching to their intellect, uh, to the standard of what they are learning in school, how much they can grasp, how much they can understand, a, you know, and present it in a way that, uh, uh, you know, uh, is equal to how they are presented in, uh, in social media and other platforms, okay, um, and also have a good worship team. Uh, and activities and programs, uh, not just for them to have fun, but, you know, in all of these things to enhance uh, or uh, help them to grow and mature in their relationship with God and uh, to grow in the things of uh, God, okay? So since children were a priority for Jesus, it might have not been for the disciples, but it uh, shows us that children should also be a priority for the church today and we need to focus on developing the right curriculum and teaching the children and taking them just beyond some stories into deeper theological uh, truths and I will just uh, uh, talk on that in a little further as we move on in the class okay now we look at a few more important reasons why ministering to children uh, is important okay uh, why ministering to children is important uh, we look at a few more points uh, the first thing we look at is children are the greatest uh, mission field okay what do i mean by uh, when i say that children are the greatest mission field of all the people that have made a decision for Christ, 85% did so by the age of 18. So these are teenagers, children, uh, you know, uh, teens, uh, adolescents. Uh, so basically 85% of them who made a decision for Christ, uh, this is statistics that show uh, that, you know, um, it was uh, before the age of 18. And hence, it's so important to for us and as a church to invest our time and resources where we will see the biggest harvest and the biggest harvest is... Uh, children okay uh, when when children you know when they are um, uh, attracted uh, to church or they they love children's church they love coming to church you know they automatically will a uh, kind of uh, uh, pull their parents or their older siblings to church. Now, if a, ch if a child has to come to church, then one parent has to bring that child to church. So we see that many times, you know, uh, we've seen that children uh, love coming to children's church. They don't want to miss even one Sunday. And um, because of that, the parents are forced to come to church and so you know even if they are forced to come to church and they they sit and they listen to god's word we know god's word is powerful god's word will work in their lives so we see that you know uh, uh, younger children uh, when they are attracted and they love to attend children's church uh, uh, or they learn uh, about more about the love of god they want to know more about the love of god it will have an impact on attracting uh, older children, their older siblings, and adults as um, well, okay? Now, Barna's research on faith development and discipleship has found that the moral development of a child is complete by the age of nine, okay? Uh, I've already mentioned this, and, uh, you know, uh, moral development means what is right, what is wrong, what I understand as truth, what I believe as truth, what I accept, what I don't accept. Now, all this kind of moral development, you know, uh, kind of comes to uh, not a full completion, but a 
kind of completion when a child is at the age of nine. And hence, we see that it is so important for us to ground children in the truths in God's word. Uh, so it would be the foundation on which, you know, a child will build their moral values and standards. Now, just imagine if a child does not come to children's church, then, you know, their moral values will be based on what their friends say, what the world says, or what social media says. And so it's so important for us to teach children at a very young age and ground them in the truths in God's word, the principles in God's word, so that the foundation on which these children build their moral values and standards will be God's word and nothing will shake that okay it was uh, uh, said uh, you know uh, that D.L. Moody the famous uh, evangelist you know um, he just finished a revival meeting and uh, when he came back he reported that uh, two and a half people were uh, saved now whoever was talking to uh, to D.L. Modi replied saying, uh, do you mean it's two adults and one child? And uh, D.L. Modi responded, no, it's not, um, it's not two children, it's not two adults and, um, uh, you know, uh, one child, but it is two children and one adult. And D.L. Modi said something very important. He says, when you save a child, you save a life, a whole life. Now, you know, uh, an adult uh, has already completed half their life and they have kind of, you know, half uh, life to live. But when we invest in a child, when I mean uh, invest, when we, uh, you know, when a child has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you know, uh, you know, and they're on fire for God and um, uh, we teach them and train them how to share about Jesus to others. Just imagine a child has a whole uh, life uh, to live and a whole life to share and talk about Jesus, a whole life to build the kingdom of God compared to an adult. So when you save a child, the child has a whole life to impact and influence others in the kingdom of God. And hence we see that, you know, children are the greatest um, mission field. The next thing is that children uh, need a firm uh, foundation. Children need a firm uh, foundation. Now, can somebody read a Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, please? Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Anyone's ready? Proverbs 22 verse 6. Yeah. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yes, thank you. So it says train up a child or direct a child on the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Okay. So, you know, childhood uh, is an important time uh, and the time we spend with children at a young age impacts the rest of their lives because the things that are instilled as a child won't be forgotten when they grow older. Okay, And so we see that children's ministry allows us to pour out these core values into children while they are still growing so that when they grow older, they will know these values. And as we teach them Bible verses to remember, they are able to recall those later in life and in times of trouble. Not just Bible verses, but, you know, uh, even as we give them life examples, even as we talk about missionaries, even as we talk about various characters in the Bible, you know, we see that the Holy Spirit will bring back to remembrance all that they have um, learned. So we see that children's ministry gives a firm foundation in a child's life wherein, you know, uh, it allows us to pour in uh, godly values, um, you know, um, and uh, scripture and uh, uh, the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God, uh, e even when they are small, so that when they grow old, they will not depart from uh, the values that has been taught to 
uh, them. Okay. And the next thing why children's ministry is important is because there's a season uh, in a person's life when they are most important uh, open to learning what it means to trust God. There's a season, okay, in a person's life uh, when they are most open to learning what it means to trust God, okay? And this season, which I'm referring to, where uh, in a person, in a person's life where they're most open to learning um, and to trusting God is uh, uh, a season between uh, uh, age 4 and 14 years old. You know, when a person is 4 years to 14 years old, so basically we're talking about people, we're saying children who are 4 to 14 years old, uh, they are easily moldable and they will, you know, um, whatever we uh, instill into their lives, it will be uh, uh, make a lasting impact for a lifetime and during the season of life is when children are forming that understanding of the world of relationships of love of God um, and so it's a season where children are easily influenced as well and we should be very very intentional about ensuring that they get the right impressions and they learn the truth. And also we need to be very intentional in targeting these, um, uh, this age group because this is a season where, uh, you know, they are building up their basic foundations uh, on various things, on various aspects. And uh, we can be intentional about uh, ensuring that they get the right impressions and they're learning the truth. When I say learning the truth, the truth of God's word uh, and uh, their relationship with God and God's love for them. Okay. The next thing why children's ministry is important is because what is rooted in the heart of a child is almost impossible to uproot in the life of an uh, adult, okay? So when God said, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, we read this in Ecclesiastes, I think he really did, not, he did, really did mean everything, okay? Uh, hence, it is during this season uh, when a child is four to 14 years old, when we need to focus our efforts on helping them place their trust in Jesus and have a personal relationship with uh, him. And people call this uh, season as um, uh, the four uh, by 14 window. It's a four by 14 window. And what we do during this window or this season or this time frame or this time period may be the most important thing a church does in the life of a person. And why do I say that? Now, you know, how many adult problems would be solved if uh, when they were a child, you know, they left their primary section, uh, you know, uh, when they attended Sunday school or children's church with this deep assurance that they have a heavenly father who loves them. Okay, how many adult problems will be solved if when they were a child in maybe in the junior level, uh, they left children's church or they left Sunday school knowing that they can place their trust in Jesus for in every area of, our, of their lives. Okay, how many of our adult the problems that we are going through, the difficulties, the challenges that we are going through uh, can be solved or resolved or we can have this confidence if, you know, if we went through high school uh, in children's church and left knowing that, uh, you know, uh, that we have a place in God's story and uh, we left making a lifetime commitment to serving um, Christ. So what I'm saying is, you know, uh, when children at any age group, you know, when they are grounded in God's love and in, uh, you know, in their relationship with God, and they know that they have the Heavenly Father who they can trust, they can depend on, who holds them, who never leaves them, nor forsakes them, who is not uh, just God, but is their Father, their Savior, their Helper. They have this relationship with the Holy Spirit who, who they know is their guide, their counselor, their helper, uh, somebody who teaches them, guides them. You know, uh, what a different approach it would be when they grow into adulthood and they face more difficult uh, 
challenges and circumstances. Uh, they can face it better uh, because they're grounded in the truths, because they are taught this and grounded uh, 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 when they are um, children. Okay. So what if everything we did for children focused on winning them for uh, Christ, saving them, uh, them having a personal relationship with uh, Christ. The next thing is, you know, why children's ministry is important and also what children's ministry is not, is that children's ministry is not child care. Okay, children's ministry is not uh, child care. Let me just present that. Children's ministry is not a uh, child's care. It's a ministry uh, at the most critical time in a person's life in the early years that are the most formative. Okay. Uh, so when I say children's ministry is not child care, what I mean is uh, that, you know, um, uh, children's uh, church or Sunday school is not just about uh, telling stories to children or teaching them some action songs, giving them some uh, sheets to color uh, and then send them away. No, no, it's not just child care, but it is about teaching them truths or more theological truths, deeper truths in uh, God's world. And that is what we ensure and that is what we do in uh, children's church at APC. So even if they are uh, adolescents or even if they are, you know, in grade one and two, we ensure that, you know, uh, the story is not just communicated to a child, but, you know, a, a deeper truth. Uh, about God, about, uh, uh, you know, about his grace, his love, uh, about salvation is taught to the child uh, and ch children will understand. And that's why I said, you know, in last class that uh, when children come to grade two or standard two, uh, you know, uh, they uh, are taught the children's church curriculum, uh, which is all basically uh, comprising of the courses that we teach in Bible college. So a child in grade two is learning about uh, covenants, the Holy Spirit, uh, doctrine of God, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's learning about prayer and various other uh, topics. So uh, we are making sure and ensuring that, you know, uh, children uh, are taught deeper truths in God's word, not just give them milk, but also give them solid food and meat. Uh, so what do I mean by this? I'll just give you an example. Uh, now, for example, we're teaching them about telling them or narrating a Zacchaeus' story to them. Uh, we can just, you know, narrate Zacchaeus' story and stop. And we can just say that, you know, Jesus loves us very much. Or we can get into deeper theological truths. Uh, uh, what do I mean? You know, uh, saying that, you know, um, now why did Jesus go to Zacchaeus' house? You know, nobody liked Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a sinner. Nobody liked him. Uh, Zacchaeus was uh, cheating everybody. He, uh, hence, nobody, you know, acknowledged Zacchaeus. But why did Jesus choose to go to Zacchaeus' house. Now, Jesus loves all of us, uh, whether we are good or bad, but he does not like the sins that we do. Okay, so children know that Jesus loves all of us, whether we get good grades, we don't get good grades, whether we are naughty, whether we are, you know, uh, good in class, uh, whatever, Ch Jesus loves all of us. But Jesus does not like the sins that we do. And when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, did Jesus tell him all the bad things that he did? No, Jesus did not narrate or, uh, you know, uh, spell out all the bad things that Zacchaeus was doing, the way he was cheating people. And people were waiting when Jesus will uh, confront uh, Zacchaeus and tell him all the bad things that he's doing and teach him a lesson. But Jesus does not say anything. So we can also teach children that, you know, we have God, who, we have a father, we have a God who's very loving, who's not waiting to you know, condemn us, not waiting to punish us, not waiting to judge us, but he is longing to correct us so that we can change. And we see that Jesus does not uh, say anything to Zacchaeus. But what happens, you know, after some time, Zacchaeus 
realizes all the bad things that he has done. Now, how did Zacchaeus realize all the bad things that he has done? Didn't he realize it before? Didn't he see that as sins? Didn't he see that as things that uh, uh, it was not pleasing in God's sight? Now, why did Zacchaeus all of a sudden realize? Was he acting? Um, no, he wasn't because he said, Jesus, you stay here. I'll go back and give back uh, everything that I've taken uh, from people. Uh, now, why why did this sudden change come about in Zacchaeus' life when Jesus did not confront him, did not tell him of the sins that he did? Uh, so we can, you know, bring in a theological truth saying that the very presence of Jesus in Zacchaeus' life or in Zacchaeus' home changed Zacchaeus. Okay, so telling the child that, you know, when you have Jesus in your life, when you accept Jesus into your life, the very presence of Jesus in you will change your life, will transform you. So we can go on to tell the children that, you know, many of you are trying not to disobey your parents, back answer your parents, tell lies, use bad words, and you're trying, but you're failing, and you're wondering why you're not able to uh, overcome this sin, uh, you know, be good, you know, we cannot be good on our own. Zacchaeus could not be good on his own, but the very presence of Jesus in his home changed Zacchaeus. The same way, the very presence of Jesus in your life can change you. Now, see, this is very, uh, it's, it's a deep theological truth that we're bringing about, but we're saying it in a very, very uh, simple way for a child to understand. And we're uh, telling the child that it is important for him or her to have Jesus in their life. And we're also telling the child what is the importance of having Jesus in their life, that you know, having Jesus in their life will really transform and change their um, life. So uh, I hope you're understanding what I mean by saying that, you know, uh, we... Ch uh, uh, children's church or children's ministry is not child care. I've seen this in many churches, you know, um, uh, often, you know, the teachers don't come or the person who's leading is late. The children are on time. Uh, they're waiting for the worship team to come. They're waiting for the leader to come and start. And um, the person is 10, 15 minutes late or the teacher doesn't turn up. And, you know, we just narrate a story or show them a video, put it on our mobile, show them a video and give them some old coloring sheets and get them to color or give them a plain sheet and ask them to draw something and color. But uh, children's ministry is not uh, child care. It's taking them deeper into um, God's word. Okay. Any doubts so far? Any questions you have? Any comments? Anything you want to share? Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, so, uh, yeah, once I was, uh, it's uh, three years back, I was uh, helping in study school, teaching the students. But, uh, Pastor, uh, most of the uh, students are not from a Christian background. Uh, okay. Most of them, uh, many of them are, are, uh, are from Muslim background and Hindus. So it was very difficult for us to teach those uh, stories from the Bible. So, yeah, how can we reach out those, uh, you know, those background? Uh, yeah. A good question, Erin. So Erin is asking that, um, uh, you know, when she was teaching, uh, but these children used to come to Sunday school, Erin? Yes, they, they, they used to come every Sunday. Oh. Yeah. That's so nice. Okay, so they're from a Hindu and a Muslim background. So what I would suggest is to have a separate class, you know, for uh, children from a Hindu and a Muslim background and a separate class for children who are, uh, you know, already being taught in the Sunday school who understand, um, you know, uh, God and his word, who have also been trained. Um, but for, uh, you know, we also have uh, something called the uh, Catalyst uh, APC School Outreach Ministry, where we minister to children in schools. And basically, all of these children are um, uh, from Hindu background and from Muslim background. And, uh, you know, we uh, teach them, uh, you know, um, we tell, just tell them, them stories in God's word. And also, like I just narrated these truths. Uh, to you, I've I've even taught the same thing to uh, children in school, and they're able to understand that you know when God is in their life, God will help them. God will help them to change, 
So yeah, we can use basic, uh, uh, simple Bible stories, and then move on to uh, you know uh, more uh, uh, you know bigger uh, narratives in the Bible where we can teach them, and I am sure children uh, will understand because even as we minister uh, in schools, we uh, um, you know we also talk to children. Uh, we give them the basic. Uh, truths who God is first our first um, uh, you know uh, um, segment um, that we have first section is who is Jesus so we teach them that Jesus is a creator we uh, teach them about Jesus that Jesus tells a storm uh, what Jesus created on each day that Jesus is um, our um, uh, healer he's our helper uh, you know uh, so various aspects of Jesus and then we move on to sin salvation right attitudes wrong attitudes where we talk about uh, various Old Testament and New Testament stories so yes children uh, uh, you know can understand but basically uh, ground them in the basics uh, and then you know uh, uh, lead them into salvation and uh, talk about salvation and all of those things and they will understand yes Okay, so children's ministry is not uh, child care. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, children are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of um, uh, today. Okay, children are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of uh, today. Okay, so we see that uh, you know churches comprises of families and individuals, and when we say family, it's uh, families made up of parents and children, sometimes grandparents uh, as well. So uh, you know, since children are also part of the family and the family of the church, they're part of the covenantal community. We need to involve them in the life uh, of the end of the church and different aspects of the. Uh, church okay uh, children are also the now generation okay they are the now generation can uh, somebody read um, Psalms chapter 78 verse 4 please Psalms chapter 78 verse 4 can somebody read that can somebody read that it's on the screen we will not give them from our children. We will tell the next generation about the Lord's power and His great deeds and the wonderful things He has done. Thank you. Uh, you know, we often call uh, children as, uh, or refer to children as the next generation. And here also we see that, you know, uh, the Bible says that we will not, uh, we will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds um, of the Lord, but uh, if children's ministry can equip children to see uh, their calling uh, uh, on their life and make a difference now, uh, then we can see the children as the now generation, okay, where they can make an impact for Jesus, uh, be influencers, be impactors uh, in God's kingdom now in the present so what an impact they would make uh, you know in the church at school and among their friends if we uh, give them this mindset that you know uh, as a child they are not to just uh, you know uh, be, uh, just learn stories and um, keep it to themselves uh, but you know they are also involved they can also be involved in evangelism uh, they can also share about Jesus to others they can also um, you know uh, uh, he uh, pray for healing for others flow in the in the gifts uh, release prophetic words you know can children release prophetic words yes they can you know, for many children release prophetic words, many children laying hands on others and praying uh, in faith and, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit works through them. God hears their prayers and answers. So we can train children. Basically, Children's Church uh, is a training place to train children in evangelism in uh, you know, uh, in them identifying their gifts, their talents, and how to share the gospel with others and also how to flow in the gifts of the spirit and how to minister to um, others so children are the now generation okay um, 
they are just as much as the uh, uh, belong to the body of Christ as adults uh, do. And uh, if they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, uh, you know, they can make an impact uh, for the uh, kingdom of God. And that is why Jesus even said the kingdom of God belongs to such as um, these, of course, in a different sense, but also that, you know, uh, children can also do the work of the kingdom, they can minister in the kingdom of God, and they can impact the kingdom of God. So as you look at the greatest uh, command, and, uh, uh, you know, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest commandment? Love your God. Because yeah. Yes, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love your neighbor as yourself. And what is a great commission? Go the world and make the disciples. Yes. Um, so the greatest uh, commission is in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20, where it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy um, Spirit. Okay, so we read in these two passages of scripture uh, uh, and we also see uh, other passages in scripture concerning the church where we read in Romans chapter 12 uh, that, you know, though we are all in Christ, uh, we are one body and each member belongs to all the others. Uh, in verse 6 of verse 12 of chapter 12, we read, we have different gifts according to grace given to each of us. So if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. Verse 7, if it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then en uh, give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it uh, cheerfully. And if you see this uh, passage in Romans chapter 12, if you read this passage in Romans chapter 12, and also the great commission and the great commandment, we see that no one is excluded. You know, all age groups are included in this. Um, First Corinthians chapter 12, where it talks about the spiritual gifts, we, we also see that no one is excluded, that everybody is included in this, that even children are included. And you will not find degrees to which this is happening based on age or any other criteria. But we have the Holy Spirit who works in all of his power uh, in, in an adult. In the same power, he will work in the life and minister through a, a child. Okay. Uh, we'll move on. Um, children are the future leaders of uh, your church. Now, the values we instill in them now uh, will spread on for a lifetime and allow them to raise up the generation after them as they grow older. So these children could be the next uh, children ministers or the ch next children leaders. So it's important to give them a good basis for that from now on okay the next one is uh, children need to feel God's love okay children's um, ministry may be the only time uh, where you know uh, they will where we can teach them about God's love where we can instill in them God's love um, where they truly will experience God's unconditional love and just accept it and just believe it as a, as a truth, okay? So it's so important to raise up a generation of children that know uh, their worth in Christ Jesus, know that they are loved, um, and so important for us to instill this in them because we do not know the background that each child is coming from, uh, what are their difficulties, uh, what are their pains, what are their anxieties, what are their worries. Um, but, you know, we can make an impact uh, in a, a child's life uh, by just instilling in them that God loves them, that God is their good friend, he's their savior, he's their father, he cares for them uh, by just doing this you know uh, grounding this truth uh, will just help them 
in their future, uh, to be assured of who they are, their identity in Christ, uh, that they are loved by God and uh, they will do everything uh, uh, or their life will reflect the love of God and everything that they do will be based on their relationship, their love relationship with uh, God. Okay. So we'll stop here. Uh, do any of you have any questions, uh, comments, doubts, anything you all want to ask or say? Any doubts, any questions? No, yes. Okay. Okay, fine. So we saw the importance um, uh, that, uh, you know, that uh, children's ministry, the importance of children's ministry, how important it is for us to minister to, this chil to the children. And, um, you know, that um, uh, the truths that are instilled in them at this young age will help them the life to come. And we can also build them up, um, you know, at a very young age to... Um, uh, to build God's kingdom, uh, to share the good news with others, and also to impact uh, people around them, other children around them, and to impact the kingdom of God, to build the kingdom of God. Okay, we'll stop here. If you all don't have any doubts, um, we'll end class. Okay.